Hey guys, today in the shop we're going to be doing bedsides on the shop truck. And uh, this happens to be a Ford Super Duty, but this will work on Ford, Chevy, Dodge, full size, half ton, whatever you got. It's just sheet metal work. And um, for this we're going to be using the Dorman patch panels. So Dorman has a few patch panels for a number of different makes and models. I'll put a link below to their website so you can kind of check out, see if they have something for yours. Uh, but really, any patch panels will work. I just like the Dorman ones because they're a little thicker and a little heavier and they, they fit pretty good. But full disclosure on this, I am not a body guy. This is just, in my experience, what I found is the best way for me to do it. And I think a lot of you DIY guys are going to find that this is probably the easiest way and uh, it's going to lend to the, the best success for you. Um, if you are a body guy and you see that I'm doing something wrong, feel free to leave a comment below and I'd I love to learn. I'm always up for learning. I'm more of an engine guy myself, but project truck lends itself to needing other stuff besides just the engine stuff. So um, here we are, and hopefully you guys learn something from it. So I'm just going to jump right into it and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Let me know, and we'll go from there. All right, so like I said, I like to use these uh, dome and patch panels. I think that they're, um, they're pretty good quality. They're a lot thicker than even the factory metal, which kind of gives you a lot of forgiveness. But um, I don't like to use the whole piece. So what I kind of learned from some friends and just kind of being around it a little bit is you want to do the least amount of body work possible and cut out the least amount of the factory metal as you possibly can. So basically finding where the rot stops and cutting just a little bit past that, obviously you want to make sure you get into completely fresh metal. But if you do this whole patch panel, it's going to end up way up here at the top and it's going to end up all the way over here on the side, over near the gas door, and same thing in the back. And to me, that's just way too much area to cover, way too many chances for you know failure. And it also starts to get closer to this body line where it can be a little bit tough to make the bodywork match where this body line starts and you can start to really see the waves. So I like to kind of plan out, take your time, mark the body where you want to cut it, get a good idea, and then cut the patch panel down to size. Don't do any cutting on the body until you get the patch panel down to size and I'll show you in a few minutes why we're going to do it that way. Start by marking out a rough area on the bed. Make sure you check the inside lip for rust. Sometimes it can go farther than what shows on the outside. Transfer your lines onto the patch panel. Don't be afraid to go a little bigger. You can always cut the excess off after. But once you cut it off, you can't put it back. All right, so now that you get your patch piece cut out, what you do is I usually take a different color Sharpie or a different color paint pen or whatever and rest that piece of metal right on and make sure it fits up good. Make sure it's exactly where you want it to be and because this is, this is going to be a final mark. This is going to be where the cut is made. So if you have to move it around a little bit, make sure everything fits nice. Don't be afraid of that. Just kind of take your time. This is where you really, really want to make sure that you're taking your time and you're marking things, checking it, because once you cut this body, that is it. There's no going back from there. So fit it on nice, mark it up with the Sharpie, all the way around down to the bottom of the lip. That's going to be very important that you cut that lip properly. All right, and there you go, and that's gonna be your cut line. So, once again, take your time, nice straight lines, follow this as best as you can. 
this is where there's going to be a little bit of controversy. Some people will say they like to go in a little bit from the line and then overlap the panels. But to me, unless you have a step tool, which even sometimes the step tools don't work too great, what will happen is it makes a lot more body wear for yourself because it's going to bump out the panel and you're going to have to do more welding, more grinding, more finish work, where if you butt them, in my opinion, it's a little bit less finish work and I think you're going to have a little better result. Aside from that, if you do the step, unless you go in and seal that from the backside really good, it's going to be a little spot that you're going to be able to get moisture in. And once that moisture gets in behind the step in this panel, once again, it's not going to be very long until this thing rots out. So in my opinion, I think butt welding it, going nice and slow, making sure you have a really good fit up is going to be your best chance of success. So once you get that opened up on these Fords, you'll see that they have this inner fender. And this is actually one of the leading causes of these things rotting out, the bedsides at least. Uh, one of them is the fender flares that people put on that hold salt and all that kind of stuff. And they wear away at the paint. And you can actually see this one does have some marks from the fender flares. But this inner fender has a piece of foam that goes between the outside of the bed and the inner fender itself. And that foam just holds salt and moisture and everything. And it just, once it starts corroding, that's it. It just keeps going from there. So some people will replace these. They'll put the foam back in. They'll do the whole thing. I mean, to me, if I had a newer truck that was in great shape and I just had one spot that I was fixing, I would definitely try to fix this. This project truck, you guys know what I'm doing with it. I'm going to be racing it. I'm going to be drifting it. I'm not even going to do anything with this inner fender except cut out the rust that's in there and I'm just going to leave it. Um, it does kind of support the bedside a little bit, but the bigger thing that supports the bedside is these bottom little struts here. So as long as you get these, these bottom struts in place that go from the bed rail to the, the bedside, you should be good. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut this rot right out of this inner fender and I'm just going to leave it from there and then I'll show you guys what my next step is. All right, so after that piece is out of your way, the next step is gonna be final fit up of the patch panel. So this is another step where you wanna really make sure you're taking your time, make sure it fits good because the smaller the gaps, the better the weld's gonna be, the better the fit, and you're gonna have less chance of burn through when you're welding, and it's also gonna be much, much less body work. So this is, like I said, you can leave a little extra material and then inch your way up to it, or I should say millimeter your way up to it. You really don't want to take a lot off at a time. And uh, eventually you'll get this thing to fit absolutely perfect. So the goal is to get it so you almost can't see a gap whatsoever. Um, can be a little tricky to do, but once you get it right, it's just so much easier to work with. Once you get it fit up good, now it's backtrack a little to fit it up. I use just a little right angle grinder. This happens to be a snap on, but uh, the Milwaukee ones work great with an abrasive disc. And you can just kind of take a little off at a time, make sure you have no high spots from when you were grinding it and uh, just kind of take off all the little corners, fit it, check it, fit it, check it. And uh, then once you get that all fit up, you can start to remove the paint. Now I like to go about a half inch from the seam on the panel and on the patch. So just get that nice and cleaned up. Don't use a real aggressive wheel when you clean this paint up. The more aggressive you use, the more likely there is you're gonna have deep gouges and grooves and you really don't want any of that. So nice sandpaper like a Rolock disc. I'll, uh, I'll put a couple of them in the description below so you can see what I'm using and get the paint cleaned right off of this and then uh, we'll get it all prepped and ready to weld.
All right, so now that you got that all prepped and ready to weld, uh, let's get this panel put back up there. So make sure, going back to the prep, that you're down to bare metal. You don't have any paint in the areas you're going to weld because any paint or anything like that is going to be just contamination in the weld. It's going to make for a bad weld. It's going to give you a really hard time, and you don't need any of that. So prep it really good. Also, make sure you have a really good ground. Um, once that's all prepped, you can get this panel fit up. And you can use whatever you want to hold it there, a combination of magnets, vice grips, and uh, just kind of play with it, work what's best. But you want to get the majority of it fit up really good, but really focus on the spot that you're going to be starting with. So unfortunately, these panels move around. You're not going to get it perfectly lined up. But let's, uh, let's get one side started right where you're going to be welding and just get one tack weld on there, and then we'll kind of massage it. Don't go welding this whole thing. This is all about tack welds. So let's get this fit up. I'll get a spot weld on here and then we'll show you how we massage it from there. All right, once you get one tack on, now you can kind of either take the magnet or vice grips off on that side and just kind of make sure you still have a good fit up on the other side. You don't want to go too crazy just going along, but find like a midway point, put a tack weld. Go to the other side, make sure it's still lined up, put a tack weld. You don't want to weld right on top of the other tack weld. And there's multiple reasons to that. One, you could get ahead of yourself where now you're welding, 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 and then you need maybe a little tweak down on this side, and it's too late. You, you already pushed it to where it shouldn't be, and now you're in trouble. The other reason is if you put too much heat into this panel, it'll start to warp it. So this whole panel as we go along is just going to be spot, 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 spot. You never want to run a bead on a piece of sheet metal. As soon as you run a bead, that's it. This whole thing's going to warp pop out, bow, create an absolute nightmare for you, and you're going to have a real difficult time ever getting it straight again. So like I said, get it lined up, spread the tacks out nice. The biggest thing is the first few tacks that you're going to do, or you're going to make sure that it's still lined up. And then once you're positive that everything is lined up and that all the seams are good, then just go along and fill in between all the tacks and then just spread out, fill in between those tacks, spread out some more, fill in, and eventually it is a tedious process, but it'll all be filled in and then you can start to grind the welds. All right, after you get that all welded, once again, remembering, go slow, a little at a time. Next thing to do is grind the weld down. So you have to be careful with this, just like with the welding. With the grinder, you can put a ton of heat into the metal. So I like to use a flap disc, and aside from that, I like to use a used flap disc on any time I'm grinding on anything that's sheet metal because a brand new flap disc is super aggressive. Even if you get the finer uh, grit, still super aggressive, no need for that. So I like to use a used one. If you do have a brand new one, little trick is you can take it and you can just run it on the concrete or run it on something 
a little bit and get that first little bit worn off because if you just run a brand new flap disc, you're gonna, you're gonna make some marks. So take your time, do a little bit, move around so you're not putting too much heat into the panel and try to only get the weld. The idea here is to not grind down any of the sheet metal. You're just trying to grind down only on the weld. You don't even have to get it all the way down because we're gonna use a smaller wheel like a Rolock with sanding disc and get it a little bit more of a fine adjustment, but this is to take down that first initial hump on the weld that you did. All right, once you get that ground down a pretty good amount with the, the big grinder, then uh, you can go down to the small grinder. So you can use these little cookie wheels. You can use uh, the little green discs like this. You just gotta be real careful with these green discs. It's just like the flap wheel. If you, uh, if you get a little too crazy with it, you can make some real marks in the sheet metal. And we're trying to avoid using too much filler. I mean, you're gonna need to use filler no matter what, but we're trying to avoid using a whole big thick layer of it. So I like to start easy. If that's not doing the trick, you can kind of go up to the next level of a little bit more aggressive, but uh, let's just hit this a little more, trying to grind down this weld. We're not looking for perfection on this. Just get it so it's nice and flush, and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. So just like with the welding, you really want to make sure you just take your time doing any of this grinding um, because even the grinder can put enough heat into the surface where you can start to warp it. So all this stuff with body work is take your time, have some patience. It can be difficult sometimes. Uh, you see the material, you just want to work with it. I, for one, don't have a ton of patience, which is why I typically don't do body work. So it is difficult for me, but take your time. Go nice and easy. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the Bondo work and painting and everything like that because I'm actually having someone paint the truck and they asked to do the filler work themselves. They really don't want me to get into that. But there's plenty of great videos out there on how to properly use Bondo. Don't just go slathering it on. Um, you wanna go the thinnest you possibly can and make sure it's completely dry before you start working with it. Aside from that, you want to make sure that you get some paint and primer on the inside of this because if you don't, it's just going to continue to rot out from there. Now, obviously, I still got another little section to patch here, but uh, if I was all done, what I would do is I would DA sand all of this, get a nice little edge on, and I'd get some primer on it just before it goes out to the body guy just because this thing can rust up pretty quick, especially if for any reason it's going to sit outside before they get to it and... Uh, the rust, once it starts rusting, it's, it's difficult to stop that. You have to sand it right back down to bare metal again. So use a good self-etching primer. Um, I found this one uh, up all is pretty good. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a nice acid etching primer. This stuff is nasty. Try not to breathe it in using a very well ventilated area, but get a good coating of this stuff on the inside. And then when everything is done, use a nice undercoating similar to like a uh, fluid film or New Hampshire under oil undercoating and just get that protected again because it's going to be very vulnerable on the inside. You want to try to get this patch to last as long as you possibly can. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Um, I'm going to put a few links in the description that might help you out. Some of the you know materials I use and everything and uh, if I do find a good video on some of the Bondo work, maybe I'll, I'll throw a link. I'm not sure who I'll find yet. Probably be to a totally different channel, but I will uh, do my best to link something there to help you guys out. But as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't already, hit that like button and uh, maybe give me a subscribe. And we're going to have more coming soon on the shop truck. So hope to see you soon.